So over the last couple of months, we covered all of the steps leading up to the assembly of our 3D3 for Slaghammer. We did the crank and the piston rod assemblies, we did the cylinder heads, and now it's time to actually go ahead and assemble this thing. So what I want to do here is I want to go through a step-by-step -step from bare block to complete motor and cover each individual step the way I do it. Now, I have certain methods and techniques that I've, I've accumulated, let's say, over the last 40 years and hundreds and hundreds of these things that I've done. And also, I spent a fair time amount as a diver on fuel cars, where you've got to literally go through all of these things in an hour, you know, between rounds. Now it's even, now it's short, that like 45 minutes, it's crazy. Back in the day, we had an hour. So, what I'm going to do is slowly assemble this thing. We'll talk about each step, why I do things, the way that I do them, and we're probably going to have to break this into a couple of different videos, because this is going to get long. There's, there's a lot of ground to cover. But, um, so, where we are right now is the block's been cleaned, 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 pressure washed, and then wiped down with a light oil. I wiped it down with some uh, PB blaster. So it's ready to assemble. You don't do that until you're ready to assemble the block. Because now it's going to collect any dirt, dust, moisture, or whatever is going to stick to it. So your, your final, like say, wipe down and cleaning should be the very last thing you do before you assemble it. So, uh, all of these parts have been previously partially assembled because we did all of our clearances and all of our, made all of our measurements. So, we're not taking stuff out of the box. It's already been in the engine. Now we're going to, you know, mop it up. So now we're just going to assemble. So, first things first is we've got our main bearings. So, in this case, we're using fully grooved mains. So, here's an upper shell with the oil hole. And here's the lower shell. On a, a standard main bearing, you'll only have a groove on the top and none on the bottom. These are fully grooved. And what this does is this, is incre this increases the volume of oil that will get to the connecting rods. On a, a performance application, you always want to use a fully grooved main. So what we'll do first things first is we'll put our uppers in the block. There's our thrust. So the saddles of the block are clean. There was there's some some people who've been making videos about putting oil between the saddle and the and the bearing. Don't ever do that. Wipe these things down. Put them in dry. Right. And of course, if you've never done this before, if you've never done this before, there's a tang. That tang right there corresponds with the tang in the block. Okay. And then we got our thrust bearing. Different engines have different arrangements. Most engines take their thrust in a different place. The big block Chrysler always gets it in the center. The big block, the Hemi. Okay, a lot of engines are number four. All right, so those are in. Um, now, pre-lube. I always pre-lube everything. Some guys will just use regular oil for assembly. And that's okay if you go through the step of pre-oiling the engine, which is where you would take a, an extension with a drill and you would run the oil pump before you run the engine. As a practice, I don't do that. It's not practical to do on certain engines. It's not practical to do on these Chrysler motors. Uh, so I've, I've never bothered. I have never, I'm, I'm doing engines for 45 years, I have never pre-lubed an engine. I always use just the assembly lube. Uh, if I'm in doubt, what I'll do is I'll spin the motor on the starter with the spark plugs out until I get oil pressure. But generally speaking, I don't bother. I use a good assembly lube, and the assembly lube more than handles that first second or two of engine running without the, you know, the full oil pressure. Never, ever had a problem. You want to use a pre-lube. So this is... This is stay lube engine assembly lube. Why do I use this? Because for the last couple of few years, everybody who I've had come to the shop to have me help them with their engine has brought a tube of this stuff. And so now I've got like six tubes of it over there. It's like I'm sponsored by these people, but I'm not. So that's why I use this. Traditionally, I used, when we had the top fuel car, we had like a BG sponsorship, so I had BG pre-lube and I used that stuff. Previous to that and after that, I used uh, Motor Honey, Motor Medics, STP, anything that will just stick. 
is all you really need for a pre-loop. But this stuff is as good as anything else, and that's why I'm using it. It's, I don't have any, any particular um, love for it. So with this, you want to just coat your bearing surfaces. Don't be chintzy with it. You know, give everything a nice coating. On your thrust bearing, make sure you get the front and the back. Okay. Any, any slot that you have, now's the time to clean it up. You don't want anything on this surface where the main cap fits to. You want that to be completely clean. So that's that. Now, the rear seal. This is the time on an engine that has a two-piece rear main seal. Now is the time to put in the upper shell. So here's our upper shell or upper upper. Seal. All right, so these are these are pretty easy to, to, to well, actually, you know what? Well, I gotta put my glasses on. You get to my age when you start doing the small things, you need your glasses, okay? When you go to put these in, it, they're easy enough to, to figure out which way is which. The lip faces the inside. You see there's like a little uh, opening here and then the lip is facing this way, right? So that's the front. So we're gonna put that in just like that. Now, I see this all the time. I see this all the time where they'll talk about putting in the rear main seal slightly askew. Here, come, come closer, I'll show you. They'll talk about putting it in like this. Oh God, I can't get it out now. Hang on. They talk about putting them in like this on the, the bottom, or you know, the upper shell I should say, and then on the cap, you do it the same way, and that's so that this parting line doesn't line up with this parting line. And you know what I have to say about that? Nonsense, nonsense. There's crush built into this. So in other words, the end of the seal is already like a thousandth of an inch or two above the surface here. When you put the two halves together, they crush each other so it, it, they can't move and nothing can get past it. That's a waste of time putting it in as skewed like that. If anything, it's counterproductive because your crush, instead of the crush being even with the parting line of the cap, the crush is going to be off to the side. So you're actually working to distort the roundness of the, sh of the, uh, the seal by putting it in like that. Put the seal in the way God intended the seal to go in. And give the seal just a little swipe of assembly lube. You could use oil, it doesn't make any difference. You just don't want the rubber to be dry. Okay. Now it is time to drop our crankshaft in. So our crank has been, we sent it to the machine shop, it was cut, it was cleaned, it was cut, we got it back, we cleaned through all of the passages, checked everything, everything turned out to be exactly right. And it's been sitting here under this plastic since the last cleaning. And she's ready to go in. So you want to drop this thing in as carefully as you can. And everything looks good. It's a happy little crankshaft. It's got some. It's got some oily fingerprints on it, but that's only from when we did our mock-up. So it's all good. It's just clean oil. All right, and now our our bearing caps. So we've got them lined up here, one through five. Generally speaking, they're always going to be stamped to tell you which position they're in. They have to go in the right ones. You can't screw around with that. You know, if if in doubt. You know what I mean? You got to probably, if in doubt, send it all to a machine shop and have them line home the thing. Uh, but in this case, these are all 
numbered in place, so we're good there. All right. And I'm a, I'm a big believer in keeping things well lubed. All right. So this is number one. The tang faces the tang. They're always on the same side, just like that. And now with these bolts, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to give them a light spray like that. And I'm using PB Blaster. You could use WD-40. You could use any light oil. It doesn't make any difference. Give them a wipe so there's no excess. You don't want them dripping with oil. And there's a reason for that, and we'll, we'll get to that in a few minutes. Now when you tighten your caps down, you go just a little at a time, back and forth, just like that. Don't whack one side down and then do the other. And after you've installed this first cap, and this is important, this is important, okay? Every time you take a step on the engine, every time you take a step on the engine, give it a rotation. Just to make sure that it's all good. Right? Because if there is a problem, you'll find out where that problem is now, right? So in other words, like we put this cap on, it's all good. Now if we put this cap on and we have any type of resistance, we know the problem is there. Okay, this one already has a shell in it. I guess they're a nice smear of lube. Right, line up the tang with the tang. Okay. Assembling an engine is, is about being systematic. You know, it, it's about, it's about, it's all, it's very repetitive. Very repetitive. It's also difficult to do when you're trying to explain to people what you're doing. Now, I use when I'm working on an engine, either assembling or disassembling an engine, I know you young guys are like, why is he using that wrench? Why is he using that speed handle? He doesn't have power tools. I got, I got, I got power tools, I got air tools, I got electric tools. But when I'm assembling or disassembling an engine, I only use hand tools. And these old speed wrenches work perfectly for this. And the reason I do this is because I want to feel every thread. I want to feel everything as it's going together. I want to feel everything as it's coming apart. It takes a couple of extra seconds, but we're not being paid, you know, by the job here. All right, see, motors, they're rotating beautifully. All right, now we go for our thrust. The thrust bearing, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with what the thrust bearing does, for instance, you step on a clutch. When you step on a clutch, you're pushing the crankshaft forward. Well, this is what this surface right here is for. So the thrust bearing is what keeps the crankshaft centered, keeps it from dancing around inside the engine. And there's an important step that we're going to get to with this in a couple of minutes. So I give this a nice coating. And when you do the thrust bearing, you always have to get the sides.
Now this is important, when you're doing the thrust bearing, whichever cap it's on, when you're doing the thrust bearing, when you get to this stage, you want to keep it just snug, right? Don't tighten it down. You want these bolts right here. These bolts have got to be just barely snug, just barely snug. Because the step that we're going to do after we've got the last of our caps on here, and I'll explain it to you in a second. This one's already got a shell in it. You can go tighter on these. You, you know, just with one thrust, you got to keep on the loose side. And here's our last one. Okay. Oops. Three second roll. Give this thing a, ro a rotation. I know I, I forgot to rotate it here, but I'm trying to make a video. All right. And she feels good. Perfect. Nice and smooth. All right, so we talked about a, a step that we're going to do with the thrust bearing here and why this is loose. So here's that you got to understand. The cap fit secure in the block this way, right? But not this way. So, because there's a step in the block that the cap fits into. So it's secure this way, but not this way. The thrust bearing has to be lined up so that both the, the bottom half and the top half are exactly even with each other. And the way you do that is by leaving these bolts loose. Because remember now, these bolts don't fit exactly perfectly in the cap. So the cap could be biased this way or this way by a couple of thousandths of an inch, which would affect the crankshaft end play. So you want to seat, you want to seat the thrust bearing. And the way we do that is pretty brutal. So we're going to rotate the crank. So I'm going to hit the counterweight here and I'm going to hit it here. So we take our fairly large hammer and we hit it this way and we come this way and we hit it this way. I'm going to do it again just for good measure. Okay, so now I know that the thrust is exactly centered. All right, and now we can tighten this down. Now notice I say tighten it down, not torque it down. So this is something, this is a, a system that I've developed over years of doing this stuff. And what I do is I assemble the bottom end of the engine and I make everything tight, hand tight, but I don't torque anything. The torque wrench comes out at the end. When I'm, when I'm ready to finish buttoning up, after all of the pistons and rods are in, and I'm ready to finish buttoning up the bottom end, that's when the torque wrench comes out. 
and that's when everything gets locked down. And I do this for a couple of reasons, but mostly because it was the system that I developed. It, was, it wasn't the system I developed, it was the system that we used when I was diving on fuel cars. Because you've only got a couple of minutes and you cannot make any mistakes. They can't be like, oh, did I forget to do this? Oh, let me go back and check that. Everything has to be done boom, 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 boom in a system. So by torquing everything in one shot, you know that you didn't miss anything. You didn't, you know, you, you cover it every step. There's never any second doubts. So that's the process that I use. Everything gets assembled to where it's just hand tight, you know, just slightly more than just slightly more than snug, right? But not locked down. And then after it's all assembled, we break out the torque wrench and we do the mains and then we do all of the rods. I think it's the most efficient system. You never have to worry about being disturbed in the middle of, oh wait, did I forget to do this? Did I forget to do that? You know for sure you did them all. All right, now on this particular engine, we have to leave the oil seal, the top of the oil seal off until we've torqued everything because the back two bolts the, the retainer for the rear oil seal will block our access to the back two bolts. So the oil seal will go on last. All right. Now it's time to knock some pistons in this thing. So uh, let's see. Um, we're going to start with number one. So I'm going to do the whole, I'm going to do the one bank. We'll do the, uh, the odd bank of the motor, and then we'll roll it over and do the even bank of the motor. So first things first is that you want to rotate the crankshaft so that the journal is at its furthest point down. So we'll do a number one here. Number one would be at bottom dead center. So we've, in the past, we've already cleaned, selected, did everything we had to do with the pistons, matched them to the holes, We've got our rings on there, the rings are all gapped. These are all ready to go as assemblies. So, and they've each got their shells already in them because they were each fitted to the engine. So we don't have to put the bearings in there, they're already there. So I'm gonna give them a little extra pre-lube. Okay. And then, all right, here we go with another one of those things. I'm putting these pistons in backwards. Why am I putting these pistons in backwards? The flipped piston controversy. Listen, a high performance engine, I don't care about a little bit of piston noise. Much controversy about this. Uh, you've got a couple of TV guys that made, uh, have a, an issue with it, that put it on a dyno and didn't find any difference. But then you've also got engine builders like Smokey Unic, and the legendary David Vizard, who says he found seven horsepower doing one of these on a normally aspirated Cosworth, flipping the piston, turning the, turn it around, turning the offset around. There's already been, if you're curious about it, there's, just do a search on it on my channel. There's already countless videos on it. The pistons are going in backwards, as they do on every single engine I have ever built for myself. All right, well, every, piston, every engine that you can do it to. Obviously, you can't do it to a dome piston. You can't do it to ones that have very specific valve reliefs. But on a flat top engine like this, with a piston that has an offset pin, yes, you can put them in backwards. Joe Sherman, Joe Sherman found 25 horsepower on a 302 Ford, just turning the pistons around. Okay. But, you know, the TV guys know best. So here's our directional dot. If, you, if you're putting this together, well actually it's not even a directional dot, it's an arrow that says a front. If you're putting this together for yourself and you want to do this the, the, the proper, quote, the proper way, you would have that arrow facing the front of the engine. We're going to put it in with the arrow facing the back. All right, so we'll park our piston right there. We've got our common Harbor Freight piston ring compressor. And we're going to slip it over the piston, like so. We're going to get it down to where it's just making contact with the rings. Okay. And now we're going to give everything a nice squirt. Now I'm using PB Blaster here, but you could use WD, you could use any light oil. And that's all you want. You just want a light oil, nothing crazy. Uh, wait, let me tighten this down before I tell you the next step. Okay. 
if you've never done this before, if your first time, it's a good idea, it's always a good idea to take a piece of rubber hose and put them over these bolts, okay? If you're not accustomed to guiding the piston down with your hand to clear the crankshaft journal with these bolts, you can nick the crankshaft, the journal, with these. So the, the recommended, there's a couple of different ways to do it. They have uh, like little pants that you can put over these, over the rod bolts to protect them, or you get a piece of vacuum hose, put them over here so you got rubber, and then you don't have to worry about it nicking, nicking the, uh, the journal. I guide these things down by hand. I'm not really worried about it, but if, if, if you don't do this regularly, it's a really good practice. It'll save you some grief. All right, so now, first thing we want to do is make sure that the ring compressor is square. That's a, it's a cheap ring compressor, so she's a little distorted right there, but she's square. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my hand down here. I got my hand on the rod bolt, okay, and I'm, I'm actually covering covering the rod journal with my hand. So now I'm going to give sharp, direct blows. You don't have to wail on this thing; just sharp, direct blows like that. If you, if you reach a point where you feel like a hard stop like that, square it. Okay. Okay. And now we're going to drive this the rest of the way down. Like so. And okay. She's seated. Now, our rod cap. <laughs> I'm not used to talking while I do this, so if I'm a little, a little sloppy. So, on the cap, remember, the tang always faces the tang. Same thing as, as on the main caps. Okay, so, you know, we've got the tangs on the outer part. Put our cap up on there. Right. Looking good so far. And we're just going to make these snug. That's all we're going to do with them. Now, hang on. Uh, where's my engine root here? So with this now, we're going to just rotate the motor. And everything looks beautiful. Do it as many times as you have to, to get that right feel, just so you know how it feels. Now, I'm gonna wipe off just any excess oil. The last step before the head goes on here, I got some, got some over, some paint that's gotta get cleaned off of that. The last step that I'll do once all of the pistons are in, is I'm going to take a little motor oil and I'm just going to give the cylinder boards just, just a, a, a slight, just a slight easy wipe of engine oil. So just for that initial start. And then, you know, she's good to go. But that's as far as you want to go there. All right, well, the next steps 
are just a repetition of this. So, I mean, we can we could do that fast forward thing where you watch me put the pistons in like this, right? Yeah, no, nah, I don't want to bother with that. So you get the general idea. That's the crank in, that's the first piston and rod assembly in. And the next seven go exactly like that. So we're gonna pick this up tomorrow, and what we'll do at that point, we'll put the heads on it, and we're gonna put the cam in it, and assemble a valve train and the, the, the front of the engine, and we'll go over all of those steps too. And then uh, the, third st the third part will just be buttoning up the engine, the oil pan and the intake manifold and everything else that goes with it. So I'm gonna finish up with this, and I hope you got something out of that, and I'll see you tomorrow.